independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 100 days since I took the oath of office and inherited a nation that was in crisis. The worst pandemic in a century. The worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. Now, after just 100 days, America is on the move again. After 100 days of rescue and renewal, America is ready for a takeoff, in my view. We're working again, dreaming again, and leading the world again. America's moving, moving forward. But we can't stop now. Uh, Did you guys watch it? Can't stop now. America's on the move again. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Hide your wallets. (laughs) Hide your wallets. Six trillion dollars. I'm going to say that again. Trillion is a lot of money. Six trillion dollars. We start to add up all of the goodies that are available to everybody out there. How was his speech last night? Thought he did okay. 85% of Americans, according to a poll where they polled people who like uh, spending other people's money, uh, liked it. A lot of what he said last night was across the board for America. I got zero problems with it. He addressed China. I love that. There was a lot in there that was good. It sounds good. But like everything, all of it sounds good until you got to go, okay, how do we pay for some of this stuff? And it can't be, we're just going to go and we'll ask the rich for all their money. We're not asking for all their money. By the way, we could take all of their money, all of their houses, all of their stuff, and you'd be surprised. We're like, we're still short. (laughs) Yeah, we're still going to be some short. His jobs plan, the family plan. The infrastructure plan. There was a lot of stuff in there where I'm sitting there going, okay, some of the stuff I really like. Now, what can you do? Like, how are you going to get this through? How are you going to get this through? All of the hurdles that aren't going to come just from the Republicans, by the way. They're going to come from, yes, I'm going to say it, even some Democrats out there who are looking at some of this thing. I don't know if we can be able... To afford this. American Jobs Plan will put engineers and construction workers to work building more energy efficient buildings and homes. Electrical workers, IBEW members installing 500,000 charging stations along our highways so we can own the electric car market. Farmers, farmers planting cover crops so they can reduce the carbon dioxide in the air and get paid for doing it. Think about it. There is simply no reason why the blades for wind turbines can't be built in Pittsburgh instead of Beijing. No reason. I love it. And he's right. He's right. Part of, look, part of the reason we get into this, we're having this tit-for-tat battle with with China. Oh, I can't believe you said that, Chad. You said the word tat. No, uh, we like cheap goods. Let's be real. We try to do everything because we can try to maximize profit. But on top of that, you're bidding against a lot of other people. And you're trying to be the lowest bidder who can maximize the profit. So what do you do? You look to cut corners and you do that with cost. And we as consumers enjoy cheap goods. Stock them deep, sell them cheap, love it. Love it. Love it. I like being able to go on the interwebs and find something super cheap. We do. And then you're like, oh, it's made in China. Now, I do my best not to. Sometimes you don't even know where it's made. He's right. We can make some of these things here. Some of these things we can't make here. We don't have the manufacturing capability as far as the people we need to produce some of these things because we just don't. We're going to have to rethink a lot of these things. We're going to have to do that, especially when it comes to certain portions of society as we try to move people away from you know, the fossil fuel areas into other sectors mining we're mostly looking at you even though we enjoy the electricity that coal brings us we also are mad because you bring us that now i know some of you at home are wondering whether these jobs are for you that's what people are most worried about can i fit in these are good paying jobs that can't be outsourced nearly 90 percent of the infrastructure jobs created in american jobs plan do not require a college degree The American Jobs Plan is a blue-collar blueprint to build America. That's what it is. 
Most jobs uh, really don't need a college degree. <laughs> Most jobs don't. They don't. You, you, you don't. You've been sold a bill of goods that you need this. And in reality, what you need is common sense, a good work ethic. And if you're going to be a lawyer and a doctor, that's one thing. There's some things out there, yes. But a lot of stuff in today's world, you don't need uh, what I think a lot of people think you need. Are these jobs for you? Well, some of them may be. Some of them may not be. Some of the stuff, though, he talked about last night. I, I am, you know, we've talked about this. When it comes to child care, when it comes to... Uh, some of these things that I sit there and think, you know, the head start, the the fact that we need the opportunity for younger kids, especially in disproportionately uh, struggling areas, to have the same opportunity as as other kids who, you know, my kids are lucky, right? They got to go to little schools that I mean, get the head start. But I also participated, you know, read books, and continue to do so. I engage. When it comes to education, not only with my son Jack and my little one, but also with with my little brothers and sisters, we engage in conversations, and 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 th- that's a part of it. We also, you know, we read, we do those things. But that stuff, I am fully for. At the end of the day, though, there is a lot in this thing where you look at it and you're like, that is a lot of dollar bills. How are you gonna pay for it? How do we pay for my jobs and family plan? I made it clear we can do it without increasing the deficit. I will not impose any tax increase on people making less than $400,000. But it's time for corporate America and the wealthiest 1% of Americans to just begin to pay their fair share. Just their fair share. Sometimes I have arguments with my friends in the Democratic Party. I think you should be able to become a billionaire and a millionaire. But pay your fair share. Okay. I, I, I don't think people are going to argue about paying some of their fair share. But here's my thing. You want everybody to pay your fair share. How about you manage that fair share in a way that a fiduciary would? <laughs> so much of our problem is poor management. Not whether or not we have enough. Because it's mismanaged. The programs don't work. And then they ask for more, and while they're asking for more, they're spending more than they already have. That's part of poor management, by the way. It's like, hey, uh, yeah, you got a trillion dollars? Yeah, let's spend five. Five what? Five billion? Five hundred billion? Five trillion. But we only have a a trillion. That's no big deal. It's no big deal. We'll spend more. That's part of it. That's why I said yesterday my tax plan for America would be simply this. There are certain entitlements inside of this that are pretty much untouchable. We need to revamp them, make them streamline and better. You know what I'm talking about. The the, the big things when it comes to, to taxes. You're going to Medicare and Social Security, some of those things. Revamp them, make them stronger, make them solvent, make them right. Then you look over and you go, military. Certain amount we're going to have to spend on military. And then the rest of it is you should be able to decide where your tax money goes. You watch out. and should also have accountability for that. What do you think government would do if you got a say in where your tax dollars went and you expected accountability for it? Oh, I don't know if they'd like that. Continue, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Recent study shows that 55 of the nation's biggest corporations paid zero federal tax last year. Those 55 corporations made in excess of $40 billion in profit. A lot of companies also evade taxes through tax havens in Switzerland and Bermuda. And the Cayman Islands. And they benefit from tax loopholes and deductions for offshoring jobs and shifting profits overseas. It's not right. Did they put the laws in? No, they didn't. They didn't put the laws in. And the loopholes that some of the people I see want to close are things like being able to write certain losses off. How long can you write those losses off? A lot of what he talked about paying for last night was very interesting when you start to break it down. Because what ends up happening, there's a trickle-down effect that just like people say, hey, you know what, trickle-down doesn't work. Trickle-down economy doesn't work. Really? Well, it works. For, it's funny because your trickle-down economy is give the money to the government, let it trickle down to the people. Over here, it's private sector, give the money to the people over here, let it trickle down. There's a trickle-down that's coming if he gets a lot of his way with some of these taxations. 
which will be it'll trickle down to other countries and the trickle down pain will come here in America. How do we find the balance of those things? He's trying to be all things to all people. Somebody said last night he talks as a moderate, but he's governing like a progressive. People see that. And trust me, uh, they hear it. I'm going to talk about that a lot more today. NFL draft. The NFL draft is tonight. I'm excited. I'm excited. Who's going to be the number one pick? I think it's the worst kept secret in sports. In fact, they've been on the clock uh, since the last day of the NFL season. And we know who the number one pick is going to be tonight. Talk about that in his journey. A lot of stuff. Earworms. What are they? Are they contagious? Yes. Should you be worried? No. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Car Shield gives you 24-7 roadside assistance. A rental car for free while you guys in the shop. And the shop is, kids. The shop that you choose. You choose said shop. They get them paid directly. It's 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 great. It really is. So your car may have 5,000 miles on it, right? You bought it used from somebody, and they didn't drive it for a while. In fact, my car, I bought my car used. The car I've got, and I've had it for a little over a year. Uh, they bought it like two years ago. They drove it like 2,000 miles and just sat there. But my car's electronics in it. So I still had a warranty for the engine, but I didn't have that for the electronics. That that wasn't covered. I had an issue with my little screen. Car Shield took care of everything. They'll do the same thing for you. Whether your car has 5,000, 150,000 miles on it, whether it's newer with all the gasmos and gadgets and you're worried about the GPS and the, and the screen, or maybe it's older and you're worried more about the engine, CarShield has you covered. You can save 10%. You go to CarShield.com, right? Use my code Benson. You're going to save right there. It's that simple. CarShield.com, code Benson. Let them help you with covered repairs so you can breathe easier at night just in case that check engine light comes on. CarShield.com, Code Benson, saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Serving up talk radio medium rare and dripping with irony. It's Chad Benson. Ah, the economy. It's always about the economy. It's the economy, stupid. How'd we do in the first quarter? 2021 started with an economic bang as the country started to shake off the effects of the pandemic. The Commerce Department said gross domestic product jumped by a 6.4% annual rate in the first quarter. And the Labor Department said there were fewer people applying for the first time last week for unemployment benefits. Weekly jobless claims dropped to a pandemic low 553,000, the lowest level since March of 2020. We're reopening. The economy seems to be moving along. We're printing a ton of money, so that's always good for the economy. Uh, now what? Like, what's the next step? How do we keep it going without running into a thing called inflation and an absolutely crash? Because that's the big fear, right? Like, last night, Biden rolls out, talks about all this stuff. It all sounds, oh, my God. Sounds great. 85% of Americans agree uh, to give them money. <laughs> we didn't ask the other 15%, but we're pretty much sure that there would be... It's when you print that much money, you have to worry about stuff. Inflation's one of them. I'm printing a ton of money. The uppers will be fine because they'll figure out a way around it. And if something, you know, crashes, their safety net is the fact that they understand what's going on in the marketplace. The average person's the one who's going to take it in the shorts. We need to get back out there working. And find out what it's like to be back on our own two feet again. Get our sea legs back underneath us with no restrictions and a life of 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 some normalcy. And I think that will happen sooner rather than later. Here's the reality. I was talking yesterday, you know, to my honor partner for the other show. I just said, dude, I don't care anymore about the coronavirus at this point. I don't. I'm kind of over it. You know, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. I don't care. Right? Get a shot, don't get a shot. I'm living my life. You live yours. I've always been that way. I will continue to be that way. I think we, I've said from the beginning, I think we overdid it with our, our, our panic porn and fear. And I think, uh, you know, we've done a pretty good job vaccinating people, but there's a certain group of people out there that are going to get vaccinations when it's convenient for them. 
and they feel like, okay, you know, people haven't exploded. And then there are a group of people out there who will never get a vaccination because there are a bunch of crazy people out there who tell them weird things that potentially may go wrong if, you know, you get a vaccine. Um, it's only at the patient's request. That's correct. Does it, tr- do, 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 is there any intention of tracking folks? Nope. Is there any in the vaccine, we heard about an injection of a tracking device. Is 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 that being done anywhere <laughs> in Orange County? I'm sorry, I just have to compose myself. There is not a vaccine with a tracking device embedded in it that I know of exists in the world. Period. Okay. Don Wagner, Orange County, Republican. Is there a tracking device? Because we heard there was. People are like, yeah, there is. Yeah. So if you want to get one, get one. But I- I'm on. I'm moving on things. I'm moving back to, to the world of let's see what we can do with this economy. How do we deal with issues that are going on on a day-to-day basis now that we're moving out of this thing? And I think people realize at this point in time the genie's out of the bottle and trying to put it back in and go for a fourth wave shutdown of everything probably isn't going to happen. So it's time that we get back to moving on. Infrastructure, family stuff, all this stuff that Biden talked about. Well, you're going to need a thriving economy and people working and the economy open to do a lot of this stuff. And we're going we're gonna to ask the question, how you pay for that? How you pay for that six plus trillion dollars? Because as we all know, whatever government says it costs, you can usually add 25 to 50 percent because they underestimate how much it costs, and they overestimate how good the program's going to do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the programs to Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. In my view, we also need to make a a once-in-a-generation investment in our families and our children. That's why I've introduced the American Families Plan tonight, which is access to good education. When this nation made 12 years of public education universal in the last century, it made us the best educated, best prepared nation in the world. We're going to decide what we do in terms of government providing for free education. When you add two years of free community college, you begin to change the dynamic. Change the dynamic. Big speech last night. Expensive speech. I like some of the stuff he had to say. I'm not going to poo-poo all of it. I think uh, some of it is, I think it was, I think it was good. I like the fact that he went head on at China. I like the fact that he talked jobs, uh, infrastructure, uh, quality, affordable, uh, you know, uh, Child care, especially for for people who who don't have the money and, you know, are struggling. It's about, you know, it's about helping without getting to the point where that help becomes essentially. A, a, I depend on you. But it's going to be expensive. It's going to be really, really expensive. Even moderate Republicans, if you will, are saying, well, hold on a second. <laughs> Well, look, let's give Biden some credit for rolling out the vaccine, although it was produced by the private sector and largely yeah. distributed through the private sector. He's, he's touched base with our allies, which has been a good thing, and his tone has been good. But they've spent $6 trillion in the last year, $6 trillion. And now they're saying what they're going to do is they're just going to get all this money out of the rich. There aren't enough rich people to pay for all this. No, John Kasich, there isn't. There isn't. It's nuts. Chris Christie, 
has looked at the, the Biden jobs plan and said it will create no new net jobs and will cause a lower GDP. But here's my overarching thought about it. The words of this speech sounded like what you would hear from a 15 year old if you gave him a credit card with no credit limit on it, except the words came out of the mouth of an adult who should know better. Yeah. And no accountability. Spend as much as you want. We don't care. Somebody's going to say no. And that's going to be Republicans. I think it's going to be Democrats out there and say, you know what? No, this is a little bit much. This is a, a smidge more than we were thinking. Just a smidge. A tiny bit. By a trillions. A trillions. The question is, we do need to address some of these things. That's private-public partnerships, which I'm always about. But on top of that, I think the way that we address some of this, too, is why can't we have more accountability in the way that our money is spent? Because it is spent out of control. They spend. Both sides do it. They love spending money. It's just which program do they want to spend money on? Which big industry do they want to do that? That's what it's all about, Chad. It's all about the big industry. Of course it is. But let me tell you something about the big industry. I'm going to throw something out there. Yes, why don't you guys... Big industry's trickle-down is tons of subcontractors. Big industry's trickle-down is the manufacturing and the things that they do that are going to create jobs. There, there's, there's a lot to it that people don't get. And when you start going and say, you know, we're going to come after the capital gains, right? We're going to start doing those. W- what you do is this is where the trickle-down comes and investors, of which if you have a 401k, and I are, you, we're not talking about people who are just on Wall Street, right? Like, the average person who's got a 401k, has got something, a retirement at work, that you feel that. But you also feel that in lack of investment. Investment goes other places. When it goes other places, businesses don't expand. You don't need as many workers. And your subcontractors, the other piece, people, they don't need as much work to be given to them because there just isn't that kind of work and the trickle down is felt and when you start raising capital gains you start doing that you kill investment you kill investment this plan which is six trillion (laughs) it's hard for me to even say that number (laughs) and so what i'm suggesting to you is right now when people get stuff passed out to them they like it but when they begin to realize the cost of this and by the way there's so much waste and inefficiency in the federal government and now what we're going to do is pile even more government on top of a base that frankly is inefficient yeah and why is it inefficient because it doesn't have to be efficient because nobody holds anybody accountable anymore well i don't care if it works or doesn't not paying for it but you are and yeah when you tell people i'm going to give you free money it sounds great what's the caveat don't worry about it you should you should worry about it how are we paying for this what are we going to do to pay for this in the future or are we just going to pass it on to our kids who are already, you know, thinking their world is screwed up because adults have screwed it up. We've screwed up the planet with climate. We've, 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 we've spent to oblivion on the things that they don't like. And now look at this. And we're stuck in the uh, military industrial complex and blah, blah. There, now we're going to be, oh, by the way, you're going to not only have huge debt from college, we're going to, uh, also, uh, tell you that, uh, uh, we're, we're going to leave you with a ton as well. I endorse Joe Biden, okay? But yeah. frankly, I'm disappointed with the tax proposals, which I think are going to damage this economy and cost us jobs. And the level of spending is astronomical. So tell your two-year-old when she's old enough to understand <laughs> she's going to have to pay a lot of money out of her piggy bank to pay the interest that we're just yeah. ringing up on the well, national debt, can't... let alone paying the debt. Yeah. So there's ways of doing it that I think are real. Without overtaxation and also getting everybody to have skin in the game. And then there's ways of doing it where it's just, you know, you know, as somebody said last night, he's Biden hood. Essentially what he is. I'm going to take from everybody else and give to everybody else. That's that's what I'm going to do. Feels very thiefy. Just say it. 323-538-2423. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from you tonight. 
The NFL takes center stage yet again because it's the NFL draft. The thing we miss the most from the 2020 season, whether it was the draft or our entire season and the postseason Super Bowl, were fans. Uh, we just uh, we all felt the the lack of energy without the fans. So this year, I think we're going to be able to have the energy of our fans and having them back, which they love being here and uh, being a part of this draft. <sighs> yep, NFL draft tonight. I'm excited. One of the reasons I'm excited is the guy who's going to go first. And it's you know every once in a while you you see this in sports, right? You see you see there is somebody that comes through. Soccer is one of those things where you can look at somebody who's uh, you know baseball's hit and miss, man. A lot of those guys draft the first round. It's they, you know they got 28 rounds for whatever they have now for a reason. You just don't know. NBA by and large kind of know, right? Like we all knew what LeBron was going to be. You kind of knew, right? You, you did. Like Kobe, people knew he was good. Did they know he's going to be an all-time great? I think a lot of people thought that way. Michael Jordan, you know, while great in college, wasn't like, it, uh, he wasn't even the number one overall pick. But you could see people coming. And you go, all right, that guy's going to be. But it's still hit and miss. It is. And, and football, you know, because you're one play away from everything changing. But you do see some people. Tom Brady's a perfect example of somebody who's like, he was a seventh-round draft pick. The most decorated player in the NFL of all time. Guy who's going to have to get a third hand at the rate he's going for all of his rings that he's won. He was a seventh-rounder. Patrick Mahomes, they traded up to get him, but he wasn't the consensus anything. And quite frankly, I don't think they even thought he was, you know, going to be as good as he is. But the guy that is going to go number one tonight, Trevor Lawrence, he was number one as a kid. They started recruiting him essentially as a child. And it just continued to go from there. It just continued to move in that direction. Like, here he comes. Who is this kid? He was number one as a kid. He was number one in college, and he's going to be number one tonight. It's like the worst kept secret. He has got all of the, he's got the it factor. Went to, went to a college, Clemson, where he, in his freshman year, was arguably, if he would have come out in his freshman year, which you can't do, he would have been the number one consensus pick. The NFL's been just sitting there going, oh, God, here he comes, here he comes. Well, now, tonight, Jacksonville gets to, Go up there. And this entire draft is going to be awesome. But it's everybody's always looking, man. It's the QB. It's the QB. The quarterback group is historically great because of Trevor Lawrence. He's one of my top overall quarterbacks, fourth overall on the big board in terms of 43 years of evaluating players behind only John Elway, Peyton Manning, and Andrew Luck. Then you think about what's happened with Mac Jones soaring up the draft board as well as Trey Lance from North Dakota State. Then you always knew Justin Fields will be right there. And then Zach Wilson with that great 2020 campaign and some others that could figure in round two. Yeah. So he's going to be in Jacksonville. There's no doubt about that. They've already started, like, like Jacksonville fans, because he's gotten married, right? He's got a good head and shoulder. He just got married to his high school sweetheart. He was a starting quarterback at Cartersville High School, one of the powerhouses out there, as a freshman. He won two state championships, broke all of the state records for Georgia for passing yards, touchdowns. The number one recruit went in as a freshman in Clemson, won the championship, and his first loss in now get ready for this. The first time he lost a game in college, the national championship game in his second year. You're going to lose a little bit more than that now. Because <laughs> you'd be in Jacksonville. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. We had a little bit of a gas shortage. We're going to touch on that. Plus another touching story. And I like doing these stories. With all the sports I like to talk about, there's one thing that Nobody, there's no other sport does this except this sport. And the story of the week, it was all over Twitter, TMZ, it's trending everywhere. We're going to touch on what a cool story it is. And also, like, why you don't give up on your dreams, right? Why you don't give up on your dreams. Rough greets. My dream 
for my dog Doodle was for him not to die and for us not to put him to sleep. And Rough Greens has helped us with that. It's K9 Vitasmart. It is a supplement sprinkled right on my dog's food. Ruff, ruff, ruff. And uh, I said that because uh, Doodle was struggling. His, his his joints were really bad. His arthritic hips, all of these things. We got to a point where we were. He was he was biting the kids, and he just if you touched him or you got near him, we didn't know what we were going to do, and we thought we we're going to have to put him to sleep. We started getting K nine Vita Smart from Rough Green. It's got vitamins, minerals. It's got omega three, six, nine probiotics. All these things. And we'll say, let's see. After ten days, there was a noticeable difference. After two weeks, we're like, wow, we're about sixteen months into giving him Rough Green. Sprinkle it right on his food. It's not a dog food. It's a supplement, and he is healthier than he's ever been since we've had him. He's happier than he's ever been. He's bouncy. The he doesn't ache. He is living his best little life, and I love that. Now, Rough Greens wants you to try it before you buy it. You pay for the shipping. They're going to send it to you free. They're putting their money, if you will, where you know their mouth is. You do it. Try it. See if you like it. See if your dog likes it. I think you're going to find out how good it is. Roughgreens.com slash Chad. R-U-F-F greens.com slash Chad. Go there. Check it out. I think you're going to be like, whoa. Okay. R-U-F-F greens.com slash Chad. Call 833-MY-DOG-77. It's a free bag. You pay for shipping. Rough Greens makes any. Pet Food Better, Chad Benson Show. Irreverence? Um, like, yeah. So what? It's the Chad Benson Show. No longer fresh. Mr. Kane was a man who got everything he wanted and then lost it. Citizen Kane losing its 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. An old review from the Chicago Tribune in 1941 has been unearthed, in which the reviewer was not impressed with Orson Welles' masterpiece. The headline boldly proclaims the movie fails to impress critic as greatest ever filmed. So Citizen Kane goes from over 100 straight positive reviews to just 99% positive on Rotten Tomatoes. Films now above Citizen Kane with 100% include The Terminator, Toy Story, oh, Paddington. and Paddington 2. <laughs> Paddington 2? Is it like the, it's like Paddington 1, it's like Godfather. Padding, the Godfather 2 is better. <laughs> Paddington. Even our critics in the past have retro rage. <laughs> I've seen Citizen Kane a couple times. Is it, is it, is it, I, no, it's not. It was, it was, it, it's like a modern version back then of what would have been, it was mainstream, but it was an art housey film kind of thing. So, and you know, Orson Welles, that was his masterpiece that, that, that he, that he did. And it was like, oh, but I, it's just, eh. This is, it's a little slow, even for even if I was back then, I'd be like, this is pretty slow. This is kind of slow. I'm just letting you guys know. I'm just letting you know. Orson Welles is if you ever if you guys want to see. Because this is a guy whose battle was massive with Hollywood and everything, but go and watch some of his old interviews. He is hilarious. He really is, and I mean, some of his old interviews are just. He's got a great story about him and Churchill, and raising money for movies. It is spectacular. You just you will you will laugh, laugh, laugh at just how funny he was, and that voice was incredible. We're talking earlier about sports, and I like good, I like good stories. I do, and especially in a day and age when we don't have enough good stories, and. Good story happened this week. The one thing that golf does that no other sports does is on Mondays they have qualifying. So they leave six spots open at all the tournaments, minus like the Masters and a few others where you have to be ranked and and there's a certain criteria to get in. And you can go on a Monday. Anybody can. And you pay your fee and you go play. And if you finish in the top six, you get to tee it up. And play. And they do that on the Corn Ferry Tour, which is like the minor leagues, like AAA. And this week, Big Mike. Big Mike Visaki made headlines. 
Not so much that he won, because he's a legend on the mini tours. So a lot of states across the country, Florida, Arizona, California, they have mini tours where guys will go and they'll play. It's basically they gamble on themselves. They'll pay five, six hundred dollars to enter a tournament, and there's get a hundred guys in there, and they basically bet on themselves to finish. You know, in a place where that five hundred bucks maybe becomes fifteen hundred, two thousand, five thousand, and and it, it's it's a tough life, and they grind, and it's expensive. And he made it, and TMZ covered him winning uh, because everybody saw it when he called his dad. All right. I made it. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. They asked him yesterday about it. Do you have any sense of why your story seems to be resonating so widely? Why so many people are tweeting about it, sharing it on Instagram? Um, so a lot of people give up on their dreams. Just listen to him. Probably because they can't afford it. Um, but I've been lucky enough to be with my parents and being able to help me out sometimes to uh, keep leaving it. Yeah. Mom and dad used to go without eating. They would beg people to let him play in tournaments when he was a kid. And they still help him out now, and he's got his chance. He's teased it up today, and he's teed it up today in a first PGA tournament. And that is just awesome. Go on, Big Mike. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 100 days since I took the oath of office and inherited a nation that was in crisis. The worst pandemic in a century. The worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. Now, after just 100 days, America is on the move again. After 100 days of rescue and renewal, America is ready for a takeoff, in my view. We're working again. Dreaming again and leading the world again. America's moving, moving forward, but we can't stop now. Biden's speech, very popular. Very popular. Absolutely. Very popular. Why? Of course it's popular. Why wouldn't it be popular? He's giving away some stuff. Think people like that? Takes a populist approach. Big spending, everybody's getting a little something, something, and somebody else is going to pay for it. That sounds like that's, there you go. It's And the other side's bad, but not really, but kind of. Like, he was, he did okay with that. He didn't go out and hammer the right. First of all, I, I think as far as we weren't working because of a pandemic. <laughs> so it's not like... Yeah, yeah, there was something really bad. Like, hey, the economy was destroyed. Obama could have done a better job of the economy, but he didn't do an awful job. I think I think that they, they it could have sped up faster. They kept the governor on. Trump came in, took the governor off. Yeah, and it took off. But don't underestimate the spending that the feds are doing. I do wonder what happens when they stop spending money. And by the way, this was about spending money last night. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money. Lots of money. We're going to spend lots of money for a lot of these things. American Families Plan will provide access to quality, affordable child care. We guarantee that low and middle income families will pay no more than 7% of their income for high quality care for children up to the age of five. The most hard-pressed working families won't have to spend a dime. The American Families Plan will finally provide up to 12 weeks of paid leave and medical leave, family medical leave. I think the family thing is, I, I, I have zero problem with that. I think if you're, you know, for some people, by the way, you can offer them six months off. And they're just, they're not going to take it. They're, they're going to get out there and... You know, it's like, I'll be honest, my little one was born the next day I was here working. Like, that's that's what I do, right? Also, you know, 
that's what you do is for me. I enjoy spinning, but I also realize that I do a lot of things that are a little bit different. Some people won't. Some people would like that, and I think that's a great thing. I get zero problems with that. As far as child care, uh, in particular, to me, I look at stuff like preschool, getting a head start. I think that's a great thing. We can spend money because that helps us in the long term as a country. But there was a lot in there last night where I'm sitting there going, this is going to be so expensive, and we're going to be paying for this for a very long time. He did address other things besides the American Family Plan and the infrastructure and the $6 trillion that it's going to cost and how it's going to be, you know, we're, this is how we're paying for it, guys. We're coming hard. We're coming hard. We're raising taxes on a certain group of people. You knew that was coming. But then he talked guns. I don't want to become confrontational, but we need more Senate Republicans to join the overwhelming majority of Democrat colleagues and close the loopholes required in background check purchases of guns. We need a ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. Don't tell me it can't be done. We did it before, and it worked. Talk to most responsible gun owners and hunters. They'll tell you there's no possible justification for having 100 rounds in a weapon. What do you think, deer wearing Kevlar vests? That'd be weird. Where'd they get one? It's that's always going to be. They're going to fight with guns and choice. For a very long time. None of that stuff's ever going to change. Do I think that's changing? I do not think that's changing. But then he talked about something last night that I, I sat there and I said, all right, you know what? I, I was happy that he touched on this because I was wondering, was he going to address it? And it's the red elephant in the room and it's China. We can't be so busy competing with one another that we forget the competition that we have with the rest of the world to win the 21st century. I spent a lot of time with President Xi. He's deadly earnest about becoming the most significant consequential nation in the world. He and others, autocrats, think that democracy can't compete in the 21st century with autocracies because it takes too long to get consensus. Yeah. I'm like, good. You addressed it. Let's, Let's be real. Democracies don't last long. They don't. Eventually, they implode. Eventually, the wheels come off and 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 they start to have issues. That's what Ch- China realized. Hey, we can be dictators, but allow certain freedoms, because if we don't allow them, being financial freedoms, and we don't allow growth. We're going to have a nation that is poverty stricken beyond our beliefs. And they saw that with Chairman Mao, the Chinese, and his his great leap forward that really didn't leap the way he thought. And the deaths of anywhere between 40 and 50 million of their countrymen and women. And a lot of the older generation recognizes a lot of that stuff. And they saw what happened with the Soviets. So they thought we're going to give freedoms in this way because we're going to have to pay for this stuff. But when it comes to politics and 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 laying down all of the things that they need to lay down in their mission to get stuff done, they feel that democracy, the freedoms that we have on who we can vote for, how we can think outside of the financial world, those can, we, the, hey. But he addressed the fact that, look, they, they're wrong. They're wrong. And they are. I like the fact that he that he addressed China. Now, does it mean he's going to do anything? Uh, you know, he hadn't lifted a lot of that stuff when it comes to, you know, Trump put some of that stuff on there. Trump, I think I think quietly, he's like, man, Trump was getting this stuff right when it comes to a lot of the stuff with China. You have to balance the fact that we are now a global economic world where we're all trading amongst ourselves. We're all, they need us, we need them in, in, in a lot of ways now. Could we... Step away from them. Yeah. We could. But we're not going to. But we don't have to bow down to them for the almighty buck. We need to have incentives to bring jobs back here. But we also need to flex our muscles at times. America's adversaries, the autocrats of the world. I promise you they're betting we can't. They believe we're too full of anger and division and rage. They look at the images of the mob that assaulted the Capitol as proof 
that the sun is sending on American democracy. But they're wrong. But we have to prove them wrong. We have to prove democracy still works, that our government still works, and we can deliver. Franklin Roosevelt reminded us, in America, we do our part. That's all I'm asking, that we do our part, all of us. Autocrats will not win the future. We will. America will. Yeah. But with crazy cancel cultural and some of these insane ideas out there that progressive has, it's going to be tough. It is. Van Jones said something last night about China and what they're doing compared to us. He's not joking. He's not making this up. People around the world are beginning to look to China as the model because China is not, they're not building bridges. They're building cities. They're building cities. And we sometimes can't, literally can't get a, a bridge built. And so I thought when he talks about let's compete, let's win, let's prove that we can do this, that raises the sights for everybody. Yeah, I think that's, and I think every American, right, left, conservative, progressive, need to understand that. You guys would be surprised. First of all, I, I, this is what I say about the listeners of my show, which God bless all of you, uh, or Yahweh or whoever, if you don't, you know, atheist God. Uh, my, my listeners are all over the place. I've got listeners who will say maybe we need to be more like China in some ways. I've got listeners out there who are staunch conservatives. I've got listeners out there who eh, eh, you'd be surprised. And, and it's always good to have conversations with, with everybody. But here's the reality of Van Jones is right about some things. They are building cities because they can. <laughs> right. They don't go through. 12 years of environmental studies. To build the things they want to do. They start with a blank canvas and no restrictions and slave labor. Kind of easy to do at that point. Kind of is. I'm glad he took it on. But when people say they're, we're, we can't even get a bridge built, well, why is that? I've got a great story about a bridge when I lived in Palm Springs, California. And it is insane. And we're not talking about a bridge bridge. We're talking about an overpass. We're going to talk about that. A little what's trending as well. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Plus, Ron Scott gave the rebuttal last night. And, of course, he's he's black and he's a Republican. So, you know, he's bad. 323-538-2423 is the text line at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. My pillow. By the way, uh, Mike Lindell last night was on with Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, they have this weird obsession with each other. And uh, it was it was it was a very interesting thing. Uh, not all of it was, uh, you know, like totally making fun of Mike. It was, it was just an interesting conversation. But he's got my slippers now. And uh, it's funny because I've got people who I know are like, I can't stand Mike Liddell. Blah, blah, blah. And then they try these things on around the office. Like, could you get me a pair? Yeah. These things are incredible. They are. I wear them at when I – so I head off to golf or I go work out. I usually have them on. And before I get out and start doing other things around the office, I'll leave them on, especially when I'm over here on my side. You can wear them indoor, outdoor. They're, they, they've got the suede leather on the outside and the faux fur on the inside. It is. It took them a while to develop these things, but you get 40% off right now. You get six different colors. They have moccasin, slip-on style. They're incredible. The comfort level because of the sole. So they've got this this amazing – got the MyPillow patented fill. Then they've got the memory foam, and now this gel that's in there made out of soybeans right here in the USA that is incredible. And you get 40% off. 60 day money back guarantee, one year limited warranty. Now's your chance. Save big. Go to mypillow.com. Use the promo code Benson. Save big. Grab yourself these. You will not be disappointed. It's the My Slippers from MyPillow. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? What is happening? 
in the world of worlds? What's trending in places like Twitter? What are people upset about in places like Twitter and Google? Let's start with Twitter. Take a look at it. NFL draft is trending because tonight is the NFL draft. Stephen Miller's trending because people are mad that he criticized Biden and his speech. Uh, Why? Did you not expect that to happen? No. Tim Scott, South Carolina senator, delivers his and the Republican sponsor. He is also trending. And just lots of NFL stuff. Crazy amount of NFL stuff. And Willie Nelson turns 88 today. You guys want to get high? I'm sure he is. Head on over to Google. Tim Scott last night and yesterday. A million searches. Who is this guy? What's he all about? Rudy Giuliani, because if you guys haven't seen, they raided his properties. The feds have searched. I don't know what they're looking for. Apparently, it has to do with the Ukraine and uh, the never-ending chaos. Polly Amaris, Willow Smith, details her lifestyle. Apparently, Polly Amaris, but can only handle two relationships at once. NFL draft, also. And uh, people... Uh, who are mad at Joe Rogan, which is not a shock, are upset that he said young kids, you know, 21-year-olds who are healthy and you don't need to get the vaccine. And I I got zero problems with that. Again, I'm going to go back to this. I'll say it again when it comes to the coronavirus. At this point in time, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. At this point in time, get the vaccine, don't get the vaccine. I don't care. We We, uh, we should have all moved on beyond this but we have it because we can't give up our childish ways and then everybody's mad because somebody comes out and says look if you're 21 years old uh you know and you're pretty healthy i mean getting a vaccine it's like is it really worth it for you what's wrong with your body and immune system building stuff up well you could give it to somebody else you could like but you can't live your life based on that crap at this point in time right you just can't it's just insane (laughs) it is so we're talking uh, before break, I had a story about a bridge. You know, uh, Don, uh, you know, Don Lemon comes out last night and he says, or Van Jones essentially says, you know, China's building cities while we're, you know, trying to build a bridge because they have nobody to say you can't do that. They say do it, the government, and you go and you do it. There's no environmentalist out there. There's no impact. There's none of that stuff. Case in point, I was living in Palm Springs, California. When I first moved out there, I think it's about 10 years ago. The overpass, which I got off on, right? So I get off on this overpass, and, you know, you get off in the you, you, the overpass, and you get, it's got four, you know, on. It's just a simple little overpass. It, they were working on it. It was supposed to cost a million, two million dollars. All they were doing was repaving it and adding a few things. Three years later, they finished it. They had several vi- environmental impact things when they wanted to move something over into this little dirt area and all of this stuff, and add something. That's why it's tough to get stuff done. It's insane. So, yes, they're building cities because they, A, have the space, and, B, when you can do what you want as an autocrat, you can roll in there, wipe everything out, not have to worry about anything, And don't care what anybody else says because your whole thing is, I'm going to do this. And you've got slave labor with zero restrictions. You can get a lot done. Three years for an overpass repaving. That's 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 government. Chad Benson show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. 
and this is Chad Benson. No, I don't think America is a racist country, but we also do have to speak truth about the history of racism in our country and its, and its existence today. Vice President Kamala Harris. Wait, say that again. No, I don't think America is a racist country, is a country but we... Well, that's, that's not true. It's what we're told every day. Tim Scott last night, the rebuttal he gave to Biden's speech, the thing that gets a lot of people talking is the fact that here is a... So Tim Scott, right? South Carolina. He's black. Oh. And he says... America is not a racist country. And of course... People are like, yes, it is. It is. Yes, yes. America has problems. You know, this is the this is the thing. It, it, we we do have issues with a lot of things in this country. Race is, is one of them. But we we take issues and we we being the media, right? People run hog wild with it, and they look for narratives and and what's the narrative here? What's the narrative there? I was driving in this morning, uh, very early as I tend to do. And as I'm driving in there, I was flipping around and it was one of those like NPR things, which from from I was like, I didn't even know what the station was because it's a rock station out by me. But I'm further out and and they're talking about the murder of Adam uh, Toledo, who was killed, the 13 year old in Village Park, I think is what it's called in Chicago. And they have this professor on, this other person, this is cops, and the guy, this, this lady's like, yeah, just running around murdering people. That's what cops are doing, this professor. And I'm sitting there going, my God. It's like, that's, that's all they do is kill, one person said, all they do is kill brown and black people. And you're like, I, we're not having a conversation, you're not interested in that, because you've done something that Tim Scott pointed out last night. Race is not a political weapon to settle every issue the way one side wants. It's far too important yeah it's it's just but you would think it is because all that is talked about anymore in the media when it comes to to everything has to have a racist angle it does there has to be a race angle I was talking to my buddies in la and they also work in the radio world and uh there was a shooting over the weekend uh cops killed a guy well he the media surrounded everything and they surrounded like they were there cops shot a guy uh the guy was mentally disturbed he had body armor on he didn't have a gun but uh you know it was it was whew. i mean there was some uh, the, the guy he he want to die and he was talking about like all kinds of stuff like god's horrible 666 it was written all over his car i mean he was you know and when they found out he wasn't black my buddy works in radio says it was like the place disappeared the media was it became a ghost town there was no there was nothing there there wasn't and rather than try to get stuff done rather than try to to fix a problem rather than try to have real discussions about stuff and just come at it with facts and and stuff because not everything look facts are great but we don't know all of the facts and on top of all of the facts there's also a situation there where as we're discussing a lot of these things there are nuances and things that that that, that we you know we should be talking about last night he addressed a lot of things one of them was police reform I spoke with Gianna Floyd, George Floyd's young daughter. She looked at me, she said, my daddy changed the world. Well, after the conviction of George Floyd's murderer, we can see how right she was if we have the courage to act as a Congress. The vast majority of men and women wearing a uniform and a badge serve our communities and they serve them honorably. I know them. We have to come together to rebuild trust between law enforcement and the people they serve, to root out systemic racism in our criminal justice system, and to enact police reform in George Floyd's name. Okay. I think most people are like, yeah, that sounds great. Here's the thing. When you say reform, it makes it feel like, like a lot of things, right? When you defund the police, reform, control, those are words where you're not going to win a lot of people. What we need to do is modernize police. 
Oh, well, that sounds good. Yeah, because it well, you're modern because that's what it really is. We're modernizing police. We're taking a different analytical look at it. We're trying to find out how we can use technology and different things to de-escalate certain situations, but also understand that it's not going to be perfect and it's not going to make everybody happy. But it always comes back to race, and it's tough. It's tough to deal in a world where every issue, no matter what happens, somebody's going to find something to, to get mad about. Somebody's going to find something to be angry about. Even if it's 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 one of these situations like this, a perfect example of insanity. So this is Zoning Commission Tony Collins. He's a cracker. It's a white person. Dr. Kerry Rosario. It's Greensboro, North Carolina City Council. And this is a kerfuffle. So it's near the end of a four hour zoning commission meeting when Dr. Carrie Rosario wanted to raise some concerns about a development plan close to her home. But instead of a discussion about the substance of that, a debate over Dr. Rosario's title took center stage as Zoning Commissioner Tony Collins refused to call her doctor. I think that we kind of lost our way on what we're talking about here. And if Mrs. Rosario has something about one it's of those It's Dr. Standards, Rosario. Uh, Thank you, if sir. If Mrs. Rosario has something Do- about... Dr. Wonder- Rosario. So... The battle begins, right? Mr. Mrs. And they keep going on back and forth because on the little thing that, you know, the Zoom call, what do you get? It just says their name. It doesn't say doctor or anything. And that's where he went with that. Well, you know, I, I'm sorry. Your name okay. says on here, Carrie Rosario. Hey, Carrie. It's, um, it's Dr. You got, Rosario. You got something I would call you Tony. Me. So please, sir, uh, yeah. call me as I would like to be called. That's how I'm it, identifying. It doesn't really you. matter. We're here it to matters to me. Writing. So that's this was a zoning meeting that turned out to be something silly. And he's trying to get back to it. And so what happens? It matters to me. Uh, And out of respect, I would like you to call me by the name that I'm asking you to call me by. As for Collins, his exchange with Dr. Rosario took off on social media and not in a good way for him. The Greensboro City Council voting unanimously to remove him from the commission. After he was ousted, Collins sent a letter to the city council saying in part here, there is no good excuse for my interaction with Dr. Rosario, so I will not try to offer one. Don't apologize. Should have called her doctor and just moved on. But you didn't at first, and then it became a bigger issue. But everything's about that. And so you you, you lose your, your gig over that. That's why we can't have nice things. That's why conversations can't go forward. Because this wasn't even about the thing we were trying to fix. Every, we're, we're trying. It, it, this is the insanity that people are dealing with. Jay-Z came out earlier today and said, I feel bad for a young generation. Their whole life is going to be dealt with cancel culture and it's not going to be good for him. Jay-Z, he's kind of like, and and that's sad. It is. It's sad that people are afraid to talk about certain issues. That's why we can't get things done. And because we've allowed extremists to dominate in such a way when it comes to what we can and can't talk about. And this goes on both sides or we're going to hold you accountable in such a way that we could ruin your career, your everything. So uh, based on that, you either comply. Sounds very fascist, right? Authoritarian or else. It's just it's 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 insane. It is. I'd call you Tony. I don't care what you call me. <laughs> You'd be surprised when people call me. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. It's got to be frustrating. I'd be just like, all right, look. Sorry, doctor. Can we move on? Well, thank you. You know, But would she? I don't know. Should he have called her doctor? Yeah. But at, at the beginning of that, and that's not even the full thing, the, the conversation, he kept trying to go back to it. And then what happens? People start digging in when they shouldn't dig in. And it's 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 nuts. But here's my question. What if she was a a doctor that was white and there was that same exchange? It was it because he didn't dress her as doctor? 
even though on the screen it said her name, or what is it if it's because she was black? Should you lose over that? I mean, now we're in a world now where if you use the wrong pronoun, even on accident. <sighs> you know, I think we should get rid of pronouns. I think everybody should, we should be action words only. <laughs> action words only. What would you call yourself, Producer Phil, if you were action words only? A little verbiage here. Superstar. Superstar. Right? Action words only. Here comes runner, Chad. <laughs> so funny. It's not very nice. Chad, I can't believe you're making... I'm not making fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm making fun of the fact that this is the insanity of which we live. And I think we can all... Because the, the crazy thing is, when you talk to people who are in in the camp of yes let's be politically correct and respectful and they would be the first people to say that person should go because of this on the side they'll say that was ridiculous they shouldn't go that's stupid but i can't say that out loud because people get in trouble i'm like that's where it starts people are terrified to say things and to stand up for their beliefs out of getting punished for it what do you call that right a little fascist a little authoritarian Absolutely. You should be able to have your, your, your belief system. We'll talk about free speech, too. And a little bit about a cheerleader in school. We touched a bit on it yesterday. I think the school's going to find out that not only they're losing two courts, but the, the highest court in the land thinks they're kind of full of crap, too. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Home title lock. You know, with all the things going on, out there with people's data getting stolen you need to protect yourself not just yourself personally when it comes to things like your identity but also your home right now your home's at risk because title thieves really what they are is they're equity thieves they're coming in and they're going to grab your title and you wouldn't even know about it it is growing faster than identity crime and it's simple and easy for them to do all of your information when it comes to your title, all that stuff is public. They can just look it up and they just start going and they start forging signatures and stealing titles and it's happening more and more frequently. Before, people are like, yeah, it doesn't happen that often. Well, once is enough. But now, when you realize that it's one of those crimes where you may not find out about it for several weeks or months, but when you do, you realize the equity in your home has been siphoned off because somebody else has stolen your title. You need protection. That's Home Title Lock. Home Title Lock is there to protect you, to alert you to anything that's going on, anything. Even if it's something as innocuous as, hey, the title company had to add a comma, guess what? You'll be notified. 24-7, they're watching it. They're alerting. What do you do? You go to HomeTitleLock.com, register your address, find out if you've been a victim. And get 30 days free protection. It's that simple. HomeTitleLock.com. Code radio for 30 days free protection. HomeTitleLock.com. Code radio. Chad Benson Show. If you like talk radio like Chad Benson likes his meals, you've come to the perfect place for takeout. Uh, I'm so over masks. I'm so over vaccines. I'll say it again. I don't care if you wear a mask or don't wear a mask. I don't care if you have a vaccine or you don't have a vaccine at this point in time. I can't wait to get away from all of this so we don't have to hear stories like this. I, Avi Mandel, just got kicked off a plane because I wasn't wearing my mask in between my bites while I was eating. The Avi Mandel tells me he's a frequent Southwest flyer. Well, used to be until his recent experience here Sunday trying to leave out of BWI, which he says was absurd and unfair. He was eating. Oh, my God. Yeah. Twizzlers, by the way. <laughs> and he's gone. I thought the whole process, the thought is... Okay, when you're on an airplane or in some of these places, you could take your mask off while you eat because trying to eat through your mask is insane. That's so sad. That's so wrong. I just was hungry, so I opened up some Twizzlers like I do <laughs> often on these flights. And a flight attendant in passing was like, oh, you got to put your mask on. And then I hear on the loudspeaker, everyone who's eating has to wear their mask 
in between bites. He says he didn't think much of it at the time, but shortly after, the plane returned to the gate, and Mendel was met with a security team to escort him off the plane. There was no warning of it. There was no explanation. There was nothing. It was just a matter of, like, I don't like you. Get off the plane. Yeah, it kind of feels weird because you hear other people going, well, hold on a second. He's eating, right? This isn't one of those things where somebody's saying, hey, can you put your mask back on? And then everybody starts fighting. You know how you know? Because there's not film of it. Because what's the first thing we do now when there's an argument like this? Everybody takes out their camera and they start filming it. Other passengers try to stick up for him. That is so wrong. He did nothing wrong. Wow. Mandel found out as of February, a new federal mask mandate went into effect, requiring airline passengers to wear face masks at all times, including in between bites. And if I knew this rule ahead of time, I would have happily listened. But there was, I had no clue. The TSA says prolonged periods of mask removal are not permitted for eating or drinking. Masks must be worn between bites and sips. You know, you got to tell someone a rule in order for them to follow it. Yeah. See what we've created here? It's a bunch of sheeple who are running around. And it's just, it's so annoying. It truly is. Chad, you wear your, yeah, I wear my mask around here because the work asked me to. And everybody here is, we, we, we asked the other day, the uppers, hey, everybody in here is vaccinated and or has had it. At some point, like, this is, who's this for? My mask that I found in my golf bag two weeks ago. Who's this for? Who who are we who are we fixing here? Who are we saving? What's the optics? I mean, it's it's nuts. I could. <laughs> that's just. I don't think he's gonna be flying Southwest for a while. I'm just letting you guys know. I don't think Southwest and him are going to be on speaking terms for a bit. Throwing it out there. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Get ready for a long summer because gas prices are going up, and it's not because we're not getting fossil fuels. Another reason. Truck driver Jeremy Johnson doesn't carry gas, but he's seen the problem firsthand. Well, through the pandemic, there was a lot of people, a lot of guys that that were single owner operators that uh, went out of business because the rates went so low. Demand for gas is already reaching pre-pandemic levels. In fact, if you look at just the week of April 12th from last year, we saw people taking about 4 billion trips under 25 miles. Compare that to the same week this year, nearly 6 billion. Yeah, we don't have people to drive the gas. That's the issue. People who are owner-operators who were the transportation people for gas, they're not out there. So gas isn't getting to the place it needs to be. So the shortage this summer it could be tremendous. And not because we don't have it. We just can't get it from point A to point B. Hmm. Interesting. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The country supports reform news and Congress should act. This shouldn't be a red or blue issue. And no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. From the very beginning, there were certain guns, weapons, that could not be owned by Americans. Certain people could not own those weapons ever. We're not changing the Constitution. We're being reasonable. Not changing the Constitution. Can't yell fire in a crowded theater, which is always used wrong, by the way, when it comes to free speech. And it was not, there was nothing about a theater or a fire at all when, when, when that was adjudicated and talked out and debated, right? When Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote it. It was all about the draft and World War <laughs> One and 
the Espionage Act and whether the Secretary of the Socialist Party of America could be convicted under said act. It was just it was. But we we use it when it comes to free speech or, or all kinds of things. And and yeah, you know what? Those things are absolute. That, that, that's what it is. You want to change it. There's a process of going about changing it. And 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 this is where the conservative, if you will, or the originalists, the people that, that look at the Constitution and they say, this is what it is. This is how it's written. And so we, we stick with that. And we deem this gun over here to be an arm. And and there you go. And over here, uh, people go, well, our interpretation is you're interpreting somebody's thoughts and words. And 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 that's the battle that is gun reform, as they call it, or gun control or whatever you want to call it is. It's about having a conversation. We can't have a conversation about race in this country. It doesn't happen, right? Because because nobody will. We can't have a conversation about a lot of things because people are more interested in catching people in situations where they can end a conversation by accusing them of something or saying something that they think will get them in trouble. So people in, in turn just shut up. Just be quiet about it. It's about not letting people who are bad get a hold of guns that's that's what it's about that's what it should be about if you're bad you shouldn't be able to have a gun well who gets to decide who's bad well that's again what we start talking about well should felons have guns not all felons are the same should felons vote of course i think once they get out and they've paid their debt to society they should have the opportunity to vote and own a gun. Unless, of course, they've committed gun crimes. If you're a felon because of something that, you know, I mean, we were, we were talking the other day about that lady who has a felony warrant for embezzlement because she didn't take Sabrina the Teenage Witch back in like 2001. Those are the kind of, that this, this, not everything is the same. When it comes to your Second Amendment, people have, the idea of how they want to, you know, this is what I think it meant, and this is what I think it meant, and this is... We live in a modern time. We have modern ways of doing things, but we still have modern guns. And we have modern access to things. I say it over and over again. You talk to people who are Second Amendment believers, as I am. It's not about background checks or anything it's about who gets all of this stuff who gets all of the information there's the battle right there why do you get it why do you have a say in it why do you get to because we all know what happens we're in our fear with government as we should as we should we don't pay enough attention a lot of people out there don't it was one of the things he addressed last night along with other things he touched very quickly on some stuff. You know, he's been really good with the coronavirus. I will give him that. I've said since this, I think he's done an okay job. I think they've run into a, or the hurdle right now uh, that they they may not be able to get over in the way that they like, which is some people are like, eh, I'm, eh. you kind of got an abundancy of vaccines, but you, right now it's, it's a buyer's market. If you want a vaccine, you can go get a vaccine. Before it wasn't like that. It's like that now. But I think he's done a pretty good job with that. Now it's how do we move forward out of this? And he'll have to deal with that in the coming days, weeks, and months when it comes from the federal side of stuff. But the reality is the states are doing their own thing. Even de Blasio came out today in New York, and he said, July 1st, we're opening up, period. Case closed. It's going to be open. I think more states and cities across the country need to start putting deadlines on things where, hey, we're returning back to normal on this date. This is when we're doing it. Because you realize the genie's out now. Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the UK, essentially said, we're not going into another lockdown. And if the, you know, for lack of better terms, paraphrasing, the bodies pile up, that's, we, we just can't go through that again. So it'll be very interesting to see the way that this thing plays itself out. But he addressed a lot of stuff last night. Immigration isn't a place where he really wants to address a lot of stuff because we do have issues on the border. We've had them for a long time. I don't blame him for the predecessors who ignored the problem, and that includes him, too, because he was in the Senate for a while. But I do blame 
politics in general for not doing the things that they should do, which is this is a country, it's a sovereign land, we have laws in place that we should be actually adhering to, or at least pretending we're going to, before we decide we're going to do other things. For more than 30 years, politicians have talked about immigration reform, and we've done nothing about it. It's time to fix it. I kept my commitment and sent a comprehensive immigration bill to the United States Congress. If you believe we need to secure the border, pass it, because it has a lot of money for high-tech border security. If you believe in a pathway to citizenship, pass it. Over 11 million undocumented folks, the vast majority of here, overstaying visas, pass it. Let's at least pass what we all agree on. Congress needs to pass legislation this year to finally secure protection for DREAMers. So, uh, by the way, the uh, the overstayed visa thing is not that's not true. And you go and look. It's it's not. But that's a lot of what's happened over the last several years. Up until last year, when it just people you weren't getting visas because you weren't flying. So, yeah. And, and can we all just for a second. Right. Can we can we all. Just for a second, take a step back and say to ourselves, selves? It's not 11 million people. <laughs> I think we all know that, right? We're all at the uh, at the point where we know that it's not 11 million. A little bit more than that. Just a smid. Smid. Smidge. I would put the number, I, we're, we're closing in on 20, I would assume. That number has been out there for quite a while. We act like nobody else has come here since then. You got to 11, we're full up, sorry. And then you go like, it's like there's a fire marshal at the border <laughs> with, with a little counter. All right, we can bring four more, four left. We can bring four more. Stop. And then he talks about spending money, infrastructure, the family plan, uh, a lot of taxes. Not everybody who supported him even thinks that this is anything that's doable because the reality is the amount of money that we're going to need to do all of these things because he's going big uh, with everybody else's money is is if that's even plausible. Well, well, look, let's give Biden some credit for rolling out the vaccine, although it was produced by the private sector and largely yeah. distributed through the private sector. He's, he's touched base with our allies, which has been a good thing, and his tone has been good. But they've spent $6 trillion in the last year. $6 trillion. And now they're saying what they're going to do is they're just going to get all this money out of the rich. There aren't enough rich people to pay for all this. Yeah. Not enough rich people to pay for all of it. There isn't. You can take all their wealth. It's just it, it, you're, you're not going to be able to pay for it. And then he talks about, Kasich there, uh, about the fact that, yeah, you know what? It's also government. Government does what? They they screw a lot of things up. And when you start going after capital gains, which is a lot of people are like, yeah, let's go after that. Let's go after the wealthiest money. The trickle-down effect that comes to people when it comes to investment in companies and corporations and all these things, it goes other places. And when it starts to go other places, it slows down the economy, slows down the growth. And what happens when we stop spending money, when the government says, all right, we're not going to invest as much as we have been. We're going to step away from that. We're not going to pump money into the economy like we have been. We're going to allow the economy to do what it does. I would like to see what that looks like. And when you start raising capital gains, you start doing that, you kill investment. You kill investment. This plan, which is six trillion, (laughs) it's hard for me to even say that number. (laughs) And so what I'm suggesting to you is right now, when people get stuff passed out to them, they like it. But when they begin to realize the cost of this, and by the way, there's so much waste and inefficiency in the federal government. And now what we're going to do is pile even more government on top of a base that, frankly, is inefficient. Yeah. And that's an issue right there. A lot of fact checking going on. It's funny when they fact check. Everybody fact checks in different ways. It depends where you're looking. The economy created more than 1.3 million new jobs in 100 days. This number's understated how many jobs have been created for the first 100 days. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported 916,000 non-farm jobs were created in March, 468,000 in February, a total of 1.38 million and the April numbers won't be out there till May, but is that true? Mm, independent experts say, eh, not so much. 
because they've also lost a ton of jobs. So that's hard. That's a hard thing to quantify in this time. But when they talk about things about, like, the jobs plan, that it's going to add millions upon millions of jobs, uh, that isn't really the truth. It's not going to add millions upon millions of jobs. Will it get some people some jobs? Yes. Will it lose some jobs in certain areas? Yes. Jobs plan that said it will create no new net jobs and will cause a lower GDP. But here's my overarching thought about it. The words of this speech sounded like what you would hear from a 15-year-old if you gave him a credit card with no credit limit on it, except the words came out of the mouth of an adult who should know better. Yeah, so lots of stuff he wants to do. He's going big. Some of it, I think, I can get behind early childhood i i i have zero problems with that helping people out especially working parents when it comes to cost of child care i think we can we can do some of those things some of this stuff i think is an overreach and some of it you're just sitting there thinking to yourself you, what fantasy world do you live in six trillion and oh yeah they're talking about yet again another stimulus let's not even forget that so some of the stuff, like like a lot of these things, when they all fact check it, it's exaggerated. It's, uh, you know, like, oh, 55% of the nation's biggest corporations paid zero in federal income tax. That's according to a left-leaning taxation and economic policy group. Who look at 55 profitable companies didn't pay. But then when you start to break it down for real and find out what happened, uh you realize that that's not the case. But you don't need the truth. You just need something that sounds like the truth or has a moniker of truth to get it out. Because all people hear is, these rich people didn't pay taxes, so therefore they should pay for this. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, Raycon, best ear buds around. Summer's here. You're going to be out and about. You're going to be running around. We're getting back to this normal way of life. So what's that mean for you? It's time to upgrade your listening game, and that's with Raycons. The best earbuds around. Come the 45-day happiness guarantee. Better sound quality, better design, long-lasting talk time and, and charging power. Great little case it comes with, and it's the noise-isolating fit that separates it as well as the price. Normally, for premium earbuds like this, you're paying well over two $300 for these, <laughs> well under 100 They've got tons of things for your listening pleasure. All you need to do is go check it out for yourself and save big. You do that by going to buyraycon.com slash chat. You save an extra 15%. Check it out for yourself. Put it to the 45-day happiness guarantee test from Raycon. Buyraycon.com slash chat. Buyraycon.com slash chat. Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. Oh, NFL draft is tonight. Feels like we could be getting back to some pre-pandemic fun when it comes to the NFL draft. Last year, obviously weird because of the entire situation. Would there even be a football season? The draft was canceled. Remember they had the big thing and it was going to be in Vegas and the picks were going to roll up on a gondola. It was going to be all these things. And, and there was none of that. It was basically a giant Zoom call this year different. It's a lot better in person, I will tell you. I had someone named Michael Strahan booing me last year, I remember. Oh, I enjoyed but it. The, the, uh, when, when you walk out on the stage and you feel that, it just it, it's great because it's just the fans – being a part of the event, which is uh, which has really become a tradition, and uh, I love it, so I can't wait. Yeah, don't know how big it's going to be because remember, not last year, but the year before last, it was in Nashville, and there was seven hundred and fifty thousand people there for the draft. <laughs> not a game. Nobody suits up. Nobody smashes into each other. Your people go up there. And they do what? They make the pick. And then people cheer. 
And so this will be interesting. And tonight, guess what? He gets to hug. This moment, Michael, you know it. You were drafted back in 93. You know, you worked so hard for this opportunity. Uh, and your dream comes true. And it's an emotional moment. It's just, and it's, it's a real privilege for me to be there and experience it with that young man and, and his family and, and to be able to see him start his career in the NFL. So whatever happens at that moment is really up to that young man and, and how he feels at that particular moment. But it's really a, maybe a little bit of relief, excitement, because, as you know, the anxiety building up to this, uh, as you wait to figure out what team you're going to play for in the NFL, it's tough on these kids. Uh, and so this is a great moment for them tonight. Yep. Trevor Lawrence will be the number one pick. Everybody's known about that for a very long time, probably since he was a freshman in college and probably when he was senior in high school. That's how good he is. So Jacksonville will take him. And then the rest, you just never know. It'll be fun. Just feels like we're getting back to some normalcy, and I absolutely love that. Nothing's normal in California. We're going to talk about the recall of Gavin Newsom and who's in and out and how it actually works with our buddy Jim Kennedy. Jeff Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. COVID brought Congress together five times. This administration pushed us apart. Tim Scott right there giving the rebuttal last night to Biden's speech. Joining us now is the person we turn to when we ask lots of fun questions, things like this. Jim Kennedy, Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research. Follow him at Righty Jim on the old Twitter. Uh, what are they banning, uh, Jim? Because I think they're banning a phrase on Twitter about Mr. Scott. Yeah, the uh, good morning, Chad. The uh, left's response to, uh, to Mr. Scott's speech wasn't overwhelming. Um, and they were uh, the phrase Uncle Tim a reference to, of course, to the old racist Uncle Tom fr- uh, phrase, was being blocked by Twitter as of this morning. It was trending overnight after the speech because they were not happy with uh, Tim Scott's response for calling out you know, the fact that basically we were already on this path when Trump left office and Biden is just surfing what, you know, what Trump had already done. And it uh, got pretty ugly on Twitter last night, um, evidently, with, uh, with Uncle Tim references. Yeah, well, you can understand that that's the world that we live in now, and I'm surprised that Twitter actually did something about it. So uh, uh, good for them. Okay, last night's speech, I want you to give me uh, an honest breakdown of of the speech itself before we get into the, the minutia of some of it. It's what, you know, it, it, it's what you would see in a normal political speech. I mean, it's not it's supposed to be a State of the Union-esque type of speech. He laid out a lot of policy agendas as what you do in this type of speech. He did it in a Joe Biden-esque style that is only slightly more exciting than maybe a John Kerry or an Al Gore would have done. You didn't quite nod off to sleep, but you got close to watching it. Um, it's not inspiring. He occasionally would go into periods where I thought that he kind of didn't remember he was president and that he was talking to a group of his old Senate colleagues, again, reminiscing about the old days or something. But all all, I mean, it was, you know, he, he laid out a, a very liberal policy agenda, $6 trillion of basically new spending, and he's going to tax us. Supposedly the upper class, they're probably going to have to get some out of the middle class because there's just not that money, enough money to get it all out of the rich um, to pay for his stuff. So we're probably going to wind up going into more deficit spending. But all in all, you know, I would say it was a typical speech I would have expected from Joe Biden last night. Talking to Jim Kennedy, Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research, as we talk about uh, last night's speech. We're also going to get in a minute to uh, what's going on in California when it comes to the recall and how that works, because I think a lot of people here, all these people are getting ready to run. But there's a way that this process gets handled that's different than than I think most people understand. So 
Uh, the immigration thing, I mean, he touched on it briefly. Again, I'm with Kasich. I thought he did a good job with 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 COVID, and I still think he, he's done a decent job with COVID. But a lot of this other stuff, man, I, the, the money side of it, I just – where are we going to get all of this money? And there is not enough rich people. You could just take all of their money, and we're still not getting to where he wants to be. Do people understand that? No. No, they don't. They believe that what he – um, tells them is the true and that it's only going to be on upper middle uh, on on the wealthy. All he, all he said he wanted to do was, was return us to the tax rates that were in effect when George W. Bush came into office, the thirty nine point six percent number, which is not actually going to, as far as what I've seen, not going to raise enough money to cover six trillion dollars. And that's also a rate that would get you know some middle class people involved too in the higher taxes. So unfortunately, like just like you said, there's not enough money with the rich. You can take all of it, and it would pay for one year, and then what do you do? So you, you're simply not going to be able to get that much. You know, there is talk. There are some members of the more liberal part of the Democratic Party in the Senate that would like to have a wealth tax um, put into maybe a one percent wealth tax. I mean, every year, if you're worth a hundred billion dollars, you write the check uh, to the government for one billion dollars regardless if you didn't make any income or not in a year. And that's something that's probably going to be looked at because they're going to need the additional revenue, and that's where you get it from. Talking to Jim Kennedy, Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research, uh, was we discussed Biden's speech. Uh, he had done some good stuff. I think we need infrastructure. Uh, I think that's that's uh, that's a good thing. I think the thing to come together that we could talk about is infrastructure. Uh, but it's also, you know, I look at infrastructure and <sighs> – there's only so much that we're going to be able to do just as the public side. We need public-private. And something I found interesting last night is the the thought process that Van Jones put out there about China. Take a listen. He's not joking. He's not making this up. People around the world are beginning to look to China as the model because China is not – they're not building bridges. They're building cities. They're building cities. And we sometimes can't – literally can't get a, a bridge built. And so I thought when he talks about – Let's compete. Let's win. Let's prove that we can do this. That raises the sights for everybody. But, Jim, you know this, uh, having lived in California uh, for such a long time, as much as I have lived all over, uh, Texas and California juxtapose the two together, and you realize that two they're, they're not identically the same. Building a bridge or a house in California is nearly impossible, let alone building a city, and it has as much to do with the fact that there's 12 years of environmental studies that need to go on on a daily basis and rules and regulations where you just have to have somebody that's all they deal with before you even think about breaking ground. Uh, China doesn't have to worry about that. No, and 12 years would probably be easy in California right now. It, it, it's virtually it, it's very, very difficult to get anything done around here, which is why it takes so long and why it takes so long to build out BART up in San Francisco and even those projects that are, that, that are endorsed by the Democrats who run the state for the last 25, 30 years. But no, the other thing of the difference between China and America is it's easy to spend on infrastructure when you're not having to spend on R&D because you're stealing it through espionage and intellectual property theft. So that you know, it helps you helps you offset some of those costs so they can afford to go ahead and throw that kind of money out for infrastructure. Besides, they've all been woefully behind in infrastructure and they haven't had any. And that's how they're basically they're having to do what we did 40, 50, 60 years ago, spend on infrastructure to become, you know, a leading first world country. So they've got the rapid economic growth and the ability to not have to spend an R&D to, to go ahead and do that. But, yeah, it is extremely difficult in California right now, and uh, it's part of the reason why California lost us a house seat is because people are fleeing the state because of taxes and poor infrastructure and high cost of living and a number of other reasons, crimes increasing, too. Let's talk about that. Census, California lost a seat. New York, California, high tax, one-party system, one-party rule. Uh, people are fleeing. They're going to places like Texas, Arizona, where politically their ideologies may la you know, uh, align. Or even if they don't politically believe in a lot of that stuff, they just don't want to be around what's going on in California because it is expensive to live there. And you've got a governor right now that is facing a recall, and it looks like it's it's it, the, the recall vote. Let's break that down first. So Newsom's in trouble. The way he's handled COVID has just been insane. Explain to people. I think a lot of people think the recall goes like, okay, people throw their hat in the ring, and then they have another governor's race. It's not the way it works. 
No. First of all, the first of all, they needed the signatures of over 1.5 million valid. They turned in 2.1 million. They've been able to validate, I believe, over 1.5. So the so the election is almost a guarantee. It will now go to the uh, Secretary of State, who will do an estimate on the cost. There are already some rumors that the cost is estimated to be 400 million dollars, which seems pretty high, but maybe that's what it is. And the timing looks like sometime between at the earliest August and at the latest November. There is no normal general election in a odd year in California because uh, it's an off cycle year. So they would not normally have an election in November of this year. So they can't roll it into just a regular election cycle. So they will have to have a special election. And then from there, within 59 days, once the election is set, people can begin to file papers to run for it. And when there is the vote, there will be two questions on the ballot. The first question will be, do you want to recall Gavin Newsom? Check yes or check no. And then you will select somebody that you want to replace Gavin Newsom. And Gavin Newsom is not allowed to run as a candidate for replacement. So you can't replace yourself on, in, 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 the, in the governor's office. Yeah, it's crazy. And and I understand why. I mean, I do. I mean, and and you and I both went through the Gray Davis thing and the way that that thing shook itself out. Uh, Gray Davis didn't have the political cachet or the high profile that uh, uh, that Gavin does. But he faces a, a true battle talking to Jim Kennedy from Kennedy Institute of Public Policy Research. As we talk about like this, the California's lost seats. New York has lost a seat. Texas gets two seats. Republican states are picking up seats because people are leaving. High taxation, one party rule that is truly, I mean, in, in many cases, complete over rule when it comes to what goes on there. It, do do the Democrats understand that or are they just going to continue to do what they do because they really face no consequences, at least at this point? But it'll be interesting. I think they're going to be closely watching. I think California is going to be in the eye of the country come November, whenever the election is, to see what happens. Because if Gavin if Gavin Newsom loses, the Democrats are going to be scared in some of those states to understand that just can't run it as they wish and that there are enough people still left in the state to tell them that they're not going to be able to run it just as an autocratic one-party rule. Because that is a problem. You see all of these bills that come across the legislature in California that are just just – you know, out of the mainstream. They're just pushing the liberalist of agenda items through California because Republicans only have a one quarter of the of both the assembly and the Senate, and they have veto proof margins um, in, for, for every bill that gets passed through. And then Gavin is signing off on just about everything. So that's going to make a difference. They're going to be watching that election because there could be a change there. Uh, the number of people fleeing the state, I don't think really concerns them. California has got a very strange tax setup and how it funds itself. It basically relies on about 400,000 and very rich individuals. And like, for example, Elon Musk, um, a couple of months ago, said he's leaving California. Tesla's not leaving. Elon Musk personally has moved himself to Texas because he's got a lot of business operations down there. That's where there's a lot of doing a lot of the testing for the, um, for the, uh, for the new spacecraft that he's building. But I figured out that over the, over the period of time, if he ever sells his $100 billion or more of Tesla stock, that's between seven and nine billion dollars. The state of California is going to lose in capital gain taxes over time by driving Gavin Newsom out. You can't drive out too many more people like Gavin Newsom who get fed up with the state and leave and not seriously affect how your income is coming into the state and how you balance your budget. Crazy, crazy indeed. Jim, love having you on. I do. I appreciate that. We'll be watching out what's going out in California because it's crazy. And uh, OK, your choice. Though. I'm going to give you one quick question. Randy Quaid, as we all know, thrown potentially his fedora slash hat slash whatever else that Randy Quaid is doing at this moment in time. For those of you guys who have no idea who Randy Quaid is, just think about this. He's the brother of I mean, Dennis Quaid, but he's also. Uh, yeah, kids, he's 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 that guy. He's uncle. Uh, he's the crazy uncle on vacation. He is. Uh, or Caitlyn Jenner, if you had to choose between one of the two. All I know is that I would definitely pay for that debate and I would bring lots of popcorn to it. That debate would be pretty spectacular. I'm not going to lie to you. It would be pay pay. 
pay-per-view. Pay-per-view event, definitely. You serious, Clark? Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're serious. Love having you on, Jim. Thanks so much. Follow him at Righty Jim. Jim Kennedy, Institute of Public Policy Research right there, uh, talking about Biden and what potentially could be happening. And uh, in, in California, I just, it, again, I look at the state. My family still lives there, at least for now, and they're just waiting because as soon as the kids, my mother's, my little brothers and sisters graduate high school, they're they're gone. Uh, and a lot of people feel that way. It's the frustration level of feeling like their voices aren't heard and that people are interested, uh, especially politicians, more in the things that they have money-wise. Uh, no matter how little it is, my family is not rich, uh, That's they're more interested in that than anything else. And it's just you can't – eventually it catches up to you. You run out of other people's money, and the weather can't save insanity. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show. 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. In terms of the overall draft, I said back in August, most mysterious draft I've ever covered in 43 years. A lot of question marks, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unpredictability. will make this draft, I think, the most entertaining I've ever covered in 43 years with the opt-outs, with injuries, with COVID interruptions. Like I say, this is one that we have never seen ever before. Mel Kuyper talking about the draft. The NFL draft is tonight. I just tweeted out. With the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jackwords have selected quarterback from Clemson, Trevor Lawrence. Ah, there you go. It's easy, said, done. Outside of that, I don't know where anybody else goes. And there's going to be that awkward moment tonight where you're like, you could go third or you may go in the third round. <laughs> so, uh-oh. What? That's yeah, a possibility. Who's it going to be tonight? I think a lot of people are going, it's going to be a kid from uh, Alabama, quarterback there. Right. Jones, I think a lot of people think Mac may go third, fourth. He may fall down into the late teens, early 20s. They'll be that surprise, too, and then somebody's going to overreach and draft a kid. They think, oh, this guy's really, really good, and then that guy's going to be awful. It's probably going to be the Washington football team, Phil. I hate to to tell you that, but I just feeling that's going to be your thing. <laughs> I like great stories, and we're going to do one right now. No other sport in the world that I can think of does this. The PGA Tour was exclusive. Getting into the PGA Tour, you got to go through a lot, or. You can show up on a Monday and play what they call a Monday qualifier because they leave six spots open in almost all tournaments minus majors and a few invitationals for players to try and qualify. A lot of them are guys who've lost their their card and their status, but every once in a great while you get a story, and the story is Mike Misaki. They call him Big Mike. He's a tour legend on the mini tours. And Monday, well, Monday it happened. Hit a 20-footer to get into the Valspar tournament in Innsbruck in Florida, playing the Copperhead course. And then he became the story of the week uh, in sports because he called his dad and mom who have supported him. And you could hear it in his voice. Yeah, his dad and mama supported him, and that became a big thing. Of course, he's doing interviews. And people are asking him, and you could hear how emotional he is. Do you have any sense of why your story seems to be resonating so widely? Why so many people are tweeting about it, sharing it on Instagram? Um, because a lot of people give up on their dreams, probably because they can't afford it. Um, but I've been lucky enough to be with my parents and being able to help me out sometimes to uh, keep living it. Yeah. He's living his dream. Again, it's it's that kind of 
you, you wouldn't think of something like this. Something dreams are made of. Show up on a Monday, and you're playing now, and you're lining up against all the people you see on TV every week. Kids got game, too. 27 years old. See what Big Mike can do. You got two ga- two days, my man, to make that cut. And then who knows what will happen from there. You guys have a great rest of your Thursday. Oh, goodness me, I see Friday. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.